Hello everyone and welcome to Magic Gathering Strat. I'm BinkyV and this will be uh, a top 8 list. Evolution of cards is what I've named it. And uh, let's let's just go over a few rules before uh, before we start here. Uh, first of all, I've targeted commons. Uh, more of a limited approach, uh, if you so will. Uh, I've discarded all the obviously busted slash misprinted cards like Rolling Thunder or I mean cards that shouldn't be common that was obviously something they made wrong and I've also discarded all the cards that had a common uh, in the past but no equality today uh, let's say Pestilence for example uh, I don't think it would be common today anyway but there is nothing like Pestilence today, so that card cannot be in here. Uh, and I've looked at cards that are older than the modern legal cards uh, uh, and compare them to the s uh, standard and, uh, if you will, extended uh, variants, variants of the cards. So, um, uh, was there anything else? Uh, yeah, I've also uh, tried to keep it to cards, not only cards, but also um, uh, a card card slot or a card e equality. Let let's say um, let's say Hill Giant. Everyone knows Hill Giant, and when you get a similar card in draft, you say, "Oh, I drafted a Hill Giant with upside or downside or something." Cards like that is what I've tried to capture in this list. So let's let's start and uh, reveal the honorable mention. Uh, the honorable mention is Lightning Bolt. Uh, it was printed in Alpha, and uh, today there is nothing like it. Uh, the closest thing would be something like Annihilating Fire. Lightning Strike would also fit, but I think that's that's somewhat more rare to have in a, in a non core set these days than anything else so annihilating fire gets the nod and I've tried to uh, find some middle ground so let's say there were one card for five and one card for two I would try to get something in between so you can see for yourself one mana three damage three mana three damage it's like it's not even close and the exile thing was Somewhat relevant, I suppose, but yeah, the context of the card does not push it up to the lightning bolt range. So let's get on with it and start with number eight the bear. The classic bear. Uh, everyone knows what a bear is it's a two mana 2 2. Uh, now it could be a 2 1 as well, but mostly a 2 power guy for 2, uh, for two mana. So Grizzly Bears represents the old bears and the evolution of this card has come to a card like Atarka Beast Beastbreaker. So here you have the 2 for 2 The 2 for 2 back then was highly playable. You picked it pretty early, if you will. Compared to the evolution of the card Atarka Beast Beastbreaker, the 2 for 2 with a fantastic upside. Pretty high pick I don't expect this to wheel, for example. Uh, Grizzly Bears might wheel, I mean, maybe, but probably not. But the evolution is astonishing. It's it's not even comparable anymore. You get the same car, but one of them has a, f a huge bonus. It's not it's not even fun. I'm I'm not sure where they will go in the future, but yeah, the bear has definitely evolved from the two to bear to human warriors with uh, the ability to pump to a 6-6, six, six, Jesus. Uh, Alright, let's go on to number 7. The big blue flyer. So, in every set, or not every set, but in many of the sets there is a large flyer in blue, usually for 5 mana. That's kind of the kind of the mark. And Avon Wind Reader, that represents um, the old Blue Flyers, is something that you're 
really happy to open. If I get this first pick, I'm 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 feeling pretty good. If I get this pass to me, I'm feeling pretty good. If I get this like third pick, I'm 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 slamming it, and I know that blue is wide open. Compared to the Chimera, he's a three four. He's larger, and he has probably a better ability. A be yeah, it's it's definitely a better ability than the uh, Wind Reader. This one wheels. You might not even play it. Is that solely because of the the limited environment? I would say no. Yes, Theros was a bit a uh, bit more of on the aggressive side, but a three four flyer for five with upside in in the recent formats is not not that fantastic. You might play one maybe two but that's a stretch I would happily play like three wind readers no problem four I'd probably look to find something else but yeah the evolution is pretty clearly indicating that the new flyers are outmatching the old ones alright let's move on to number six the grey ogres uh, kind of fun that I didn't pick the actual grey ogre but I wanted to try to uh, to go a bit higher. So a grey ogre is a 2, 2 for 3, nothing else. So this would be a grey ogre with haste. It's a pretty decent card. It's It goes pretty early and it's a good beatdown card. Three, three, uh, 2, 2 for haste for 3 mana, pretty nice. Compare it to a uh, medium pick in Theros. 2, 2 haste for 3, but it also hits for 2 extra damage. Um, uh, when it first swings. Once again it's like pretty high pick without the upside pretty medium pick with the upside. If this was a card back in the days it would be like maybe not first pick but second third fourth pick easily no problem. Could you take it that early in Theros? Definitely if you were in a red aggressive deck but there is a lot of a lot of other cards that you would pick instead. So the Grey Ogres evolves pretty fast as well. They, they already started to evolve back in the days. Let's go on to number five. The Windrakes. Holy crap! Windrake is one of my favorite limited cards. I mean, it's a two to fly for three. It doesn't ask anything of you. It pits down. It trades. It does everything you wanted to do. And it's a Pretty high pick. I mean, third pick, fourth pick, pretty nice. You're happy to get it there. Compared to Nimbus Nyad, it's the same creature, but this one has Bestow as well. And Bestow was a busted mechanic, I know. But if you think that I'm a bit too uh, too biased about the new creatures, just just pretend it's the SK Wind Scout instead. Basically, the same flyer, but with a huge upside anyway. Do you have to work for it? Yes. Does it matter? No, it does not. It it doesn't require you to warp your whole deck if you don't want to. One defined strike and you're you're there. It's it's okay. So Windrakes, will they be printed again? Yeah, probably. Will they outmatch a card like Nimbus Knight? Never. Not even close. Creatures are getting better. No question about that. Let's continue, shall we? The black premium removals. So this is a this is one of the cards that are getting worse. I I like the dark banishing to represent the old black premium removals. Three mana instant destroy something, but it has a a small restriction, non black. Uh, compared to today's comparison, I mean there is a few you could pick from. I chose Reach of Shadows because it's pretty similar. 5 mana instant, basically the same restriction. I mean, it, this can't target uh, monocolor or multicolor, this can't target black. It's, it's, I'd say that it's probably about the same. This would be worse, I think, today. Nah, probably not, if it was this restriction, but yeah. Overall, the black common removal are getting bad. We have seen it in the previous sets like Rites of the Serpent um, what was that called in 
Innistrad, like five mana destroy something sorcery. You gain life it was if it was a human, I think. I mean, they're getting more expensive, that's the thing. Is that a good or bad thing? I don't know. Uh, I think it's pretty nice to pick up a removal spell that I'm happy to play versus Reach of Shadows. That they, they somewhat feel like, uh, alright, I feel a bit guilty to take it. I mean, if it's, like, if it's between this and, uh, let's say, a decent black flyer for 3 or 4 mana, I'd probably take the flyer. Because it's just better type creatures than the expensive removals. Alright, let's move on to number three. The blue draw spells. So, I think now we have like five or six different blue draw spells in the Cons of Turkey block. We have uh, the Inspiration variant, we have uh, the draw discard, we have Treasure Cruise, we have... I mean, there's so many different versions. Back then, a card like Dream Cash was pretty high. I'd be happy to pick this up in the few first few picks. And it's 3 mana sorcery, draw 3, choose 2 cards, whichever you want, and put them both either on top or bottom. So, if you use this early, let's say you want lands and you draw, you draw 3 cards, you probably find a land. Then you can choose to put 2 bad spells on the bottom. Or if you have all good spells, you just put them on top. If if it's later in the game and you have let's say two lands in hand and you draw this, it's just draw three cards for two mana, and you don't have to put them on top. You put them on the bottom. It's such a good card that it's very hard to. I just can't um, can't explain it in a short sentence. It's very good. Let's just say that. Compared to divination. 3 mana sorcery, draw 2 cards. That's it. It will never do anything else than that. Is this a very high pick in draft? Sometimes it is. In Mad M14, I think it was like one of the best cards you can open, besides opportunity and super bombs or extremely good removal. In M15, I think it was printed, it was like uh, med medium, 6, 7, 8. You you end up playing one or two maybe, but you weren't that happy. Other versions of divination, are you happy to play them? Eh, some of them you are, some of them you're not. They have they've been downgraded significantly. Dreamcash and uh, the other uh, uh, cards like it, like Sift and the other ones, they're just w way better. F several notch above divinations and stuff, and divination are fine. I'd play Divination if the deck supports it. Or if I can make the deck support it, more like. So, yeah, blue draw spells have gone down. And I know Treasure Cruise is banned and stuff, but that's constructed. It was not as good in Limited. So, don't, don't give me that. Let's move on to number two, and now it's getting pretty busted. Looters. Come on. Is it too much to ask to get a decent looter? So, Merfolk looter was the staple looter for several years. So 1-1 one, one for 2 mana that draws a card and discards a card. No mana requirements, nothing. So, a 1-1 one, one is almost... It's not a card. It's like a quarter of a card or something. It's it's not good. You might, may, might get to shumpbox something one turn, but you're playing this card for the ability, nothing else. So, what has happened from then up until today? Well, it's the same mana cost, it's the same ability, but what we have, what, what the changes are is that it's now costing 4 mana to activate, but you get a 1-3 instead. So, you get a decent blocker out of the deal, but a horrible looter. What's weird is that this is still a decent playable in draft. In Magic 15, it's, it's actually pretty good. It's not the high pick, it's not something you pick up in the first couple of picks, but 7th, 8th, 9th, that's okay. And you would play 1, you would play 2, and you'd be happy to activate the ability once you get there and 
uh, the game has stalled out. And that's what's a bit scary because those are like first, second, third, fourth pick. And you would always play them and they're really good. But the research assistant is just so bad in comparison but you still play it. And you still get to activate the ability sometimes. The big difference is that they're both good when the game has gone super late and you you and your opponent are sitting there. That's not where the difference is. The difference is when you play this on turn 2 and you don't have enough lands and you start drawing cards and discarding your bad spells to hit land drops. That's something the research assistant can't do. So I'd say that yes this gives you some time because it blocks but this this just gets the game over that it's it's so so much better than the research assistant that I can't I can't explain it basically there's also the red one uh, like the 05 for 3 mana that costs like 5000 mana and then you have to discard first and it's a different color that's like what will we see in the next set it would probably be like a an 01 for 4 mana that costs 6 to activate and then you have to discard two cards or something like that. I get that card filtering is really strong, but there ha there there has to be strong cards. That's the thing. So this is one of the creature types or creature cards that has been nerfed a lot, even though creeps are getting better. So let's move on to the first, uh, for my first pick, number one on the list. They barely beat the looters. The tappers. Come on. The tappers. <sighs> I, I don't know where to begin. Master Decoy get to uh, represent the old tappers. A 1 2 for 2 mana, not worth a card. It blocks 1 once if you want to, but tappers don't get to block anyway. It could it could be a, a, a no one. It's It doesn't really matter. So it's it's pretty cheap and it costs one to activate and you get to tap whatever you want. Compared to Dromoka Dune Caster, it's one mana so it's cheaper. That's a that's a bonus. For an O2. Okay, that's that's a minus, but it's irrelevant, so fair enough. Two mana to tap. It's worse, but it's still okay, but <laughs> but you can't tap creatures with flying. And that's a huge restriction right there. Uh, I could have picked the the lion or whatever it was, or a hound from uh, the Theros block, a two two for four with the tap ability. But the thing with tappers is that you want them to come down early, and then you get to curve out anyway, and use the tap ability on the way up, and then you get to start smashing and just dominate. When they cost four. You play like a 2 drop and a 3 drop and they play the same and you can't attack, then you play your tapper, then they play something big and you can still you, you still can't attack and then you you have to take yourself out of the curve again and you can't can't still can't attack and then they play something else and or kill your tapper and get a huge bonus because it's so expensive that's not it's not going to cut it. I will give the dune caster the benefit of being better in a in an in another set besides a set that is clustered with dragons and stuff with flying in in another set with a less density of flyers it might be decent but here it's like you get it 12th pick and that's like ah, I take it for signaling and you end up with three in your sideboard if you play one in your main board you're pretty sad you don't want to play that in the main usually Whereas Master Rico is the first pick, second pick you're happy, third pick you're stoked, fourth pick white is wide open. You'll you'll take like four of those and you'll still be happy. So tappers have been nerfed a lot. So despite the saying that creatures are getting better, some creatures are actually not being better. Master decoy, Merfolk looter. They would like to chat a bit with the Dune caster and research assistant because they're they're bad really bad in comparison so that concludes my list of card evolution um, have I missed a few cards most likely have I have I 
looked at many cards and decided that some of them wouldn't make the list, certainly. Uh, do you have another opinion than me? Most likely. Please leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Uh, what did I miss? Where am I wrong? Is there anything I should have told you that I haven't? I will end with this though. It's not only that creatures are being better, like previously you got a 2 2 for 2, now you get a 3 2 for 2. It's not y just that. It's also that the best creature is a 3 3 for 3, let's say that. And that's that's true today as well. But the second best creature in the previous sets, the old sets, are like a 2-2 two, two for 3. And the second best creature here is still a 3-3 three, three for 3. It's 2 two of the same or something. The, the density of good creatures are a lot higher than it was <laughs> in, the, in the old sets. Like uh, Tempest or Mercadian Masks or whatever. There are still good creatures in those sets, don't get me wrong. We can see it here, Master Decoy. But overall, the the creature quality and creature quali the density of the quality creatures have gone way up, and at the same time, the spells have gone way down. Are there still good spells in limited? Definitely, like bathing dragonfire is pretty good right now, or um, uh, let's say Oyutai summons is pretty busted, stuff like that, and there's still plenty of good spells but overall they've gone down and they're not f uh, as frequent as they have been so with that I will end this top 8 and I hope you have enjoyed it and I will bring you something else and if you have a suggestion please write it too so I, so I can see it anyway thanks for watching I'll bring you more have a great day